This is a big pile of what's it. Aha! I told you I didn't need your pile of what's it. It was him! Oh, crap. I don't know what this machine is. Or what's in it. It looks like it's pretty dusty. It's got two USBs, a knockout for something there, a knockout for firewire, slightly mashed bay. I don't have these pieces. I don't know why the drives are mounted like this. This looks like a DVD burner and a CD burner. Probably decent. Also has the uh, headphone jack, so that's nice. Ooh, it's not a good sound. And uh, I think the panel is off. Let me see. Yes, it is. The fan is still connected. Let me get that out. This looks like it probably used to have one of those cold cathode fluorescent lights that was taken out. Uh, my friend Matt gave this to me. Uh, the hard drive is gone. I don't know if there was a floppy drive at all. I'd guess probably not, because that was too new. I mean, that was too old for him. Uh, it's in bad shape. Um, yeah, that's not going to work, um, so we don't need that. Bearing isn't bad on it. Bearing's not bad on that either, but it could use oil. I have no idea what kind of processor this has. There's no blown or bulging caps, at least not yet. <clears throat> it's an old board. I think it's DDR RAM. Has an AGP graphics card. Ooh, we might need that. A sound card, because onboard sound, which it does have, just wouldn't be good enough. So there's that. Oh, and it even has the wire that goes up to the optical drive, which is pretty nifty. And this next card, um, I don't know what it is. We'll have to pull it and find out. And there is a Firewire card at the bottom. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's broken and disconnected. I pulled this out. So that probably isn't going to work anymore, although it can be made to work. Any wire IDE cables bunch of other power connectors the front USB headers are not connected but fortunately the front panel stuff is except for this for the power light I guess they didn't like that I don't know um, so really at this point I think I'm gonna go ahead and wire this up a bit and We'll see if we could run some diagnostics on it and see if it's even anything. It's probably had a lot of use, I'm guessing. <laughs> Here's the back, obviously. One serial port, parallel PS2, four USBs. And if Matt put this together, it looks like I... I think he didn't know what the fuck he was doing. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So he just bent that out of the way because he didn't get it seated quite right, and it was easier. And, I mean, it'll work, but whatever. VGA, there's the sound card, I don't know what it is. And here's that other card, SE-ML, I, I don't know. That says digital, and that says analog. This might have been used for some sort of music. Maybe that's some sort of MIDI card? I don't know. And the Firewire card at the bottom. Um, I don't even know if it has an internal one. I don't think so, but it looks like it has a header sticking down right there. And the PC speaker is disconnected. And there's a bunch of screws on, the <laughs> on this speaker there. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah... All right, let me get this cabled up. I've already plugged in the optical drives, uh, as you can see. Okay, I have the monitor plugged in. This is plugged in, but I have not thrown the main switch. So, time for a preliminary smoke test. 
Okay, nothing went bang yet. Oh, okay. Oh, that was a nice sound. Uh, well, it would help if I plugged that in too. Let's try that again. Take two. I actually like this power button. Still no joy. Oh, there we are. AMD Athlon XP2000 with 512 Mega RAM. Ouch. Now oh, the drive ejected. And this is a not terribly rare, but still kind of rare uh, IDE DVD burner. Those you can't really get anymore. Let's see if it'll accept the disc. It looks like it might have. I don't know if the boot order is set correctly. Certainly makes a really nice sound. Oh. No, didn't like that one. We'll try the other drive. That ejected also. Good. And if that doesn't work, we'll go... Oh, let's see if the reset button works. It does. If that doesn't work, we'll go into the BIOS and see if we can change the boot order. Ah, excellent. But it still didn't work. Wonderful. A, huh? IDE Secondary Slave AOC Adir C at Z2S? AOC is kind of maybe close to Sony. I don't know. So let's eject that again. Put it back in here. Power down. And I will disconnect this drive down here. The Sony drive and see if the other one is detected. I'll go right in the BIOS this time. This is an NVIDIA TNT2 Model 64 VGA BIOS, it said. And in the BIOS... Ah! That looks a lot more promising. The jumpers and everything else aren't set right, but that's okay. Uh, escape to exit. Quit without saving is fine. And let's see if it'll go and boot this time. Drive is trying to read. Yes! Bingo! Okay, this is a shuttle motherboard. Everything's squared. Wow, that's not the first time I've seen that. The old uh, IBM ThinkPad, whatever it is in the garage, had a lot of squared stuff. So it's an award BIOS from 03 AMD Athlon XP 2000 Plus. It's a 1.6 gigahertz and it's 512 mega RAM at PC133. Probably nothing I want. Uh, audio is interesting. Thunderbird, Avenger, Audio Accelerator, AutoG Audio Processor, VT8233 slash A AC97 Enhanced Audio Controller. Okay. Network is a Rhin. And it has PCI, AGP, ISA, LPC. Nope, didn't have that. USB, Firewire, yeah. IDE, Serial and Parallel. Oh, look at that. Information marked with a squared is provided by the BIOS and may be inaccurate. Okay, well, at least we know now. Um, probably that's all I want in that. Let me see, just for fun, let's go right over to Firewire and see if it identifies it. I, I, yeah, I, it does see it. Test controllers. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Controller information. It's a VIA chipset. That's really about it. Um, 
we'll go over and test the processor. That was uneventful. Test the motherboard. Oh, the system clocks haven't failed, but they're different by more than three seconds. Sure, correct it. And it says that it is April 13th, 2014. So that seems to work. Memory, we'll just run through the uh, cache memory, because that's pretty quick here. That looks like it worked. Benchmark the memory and it shows with the cache enabled it's 518 megasecond and 126 with it disabled. The cache profiler puts up a graph on the screen that only smart people know what it does. Looks very similar to what you'd see on a Pentium 4 and the video memory test. Okay, that all worked. I'll test the RAM, and I'm not going to stand here and hold the camera. I'll just let it do its thing. It says it has two 256 meg modules, which is certainly what's in there. So we'll let that run, and I'll come back when that's finished. Okay, everything in this system checks out. But... I don't think I'm gonna keep it. That's what the front of it says, just to show how high quality this thing really was. Uh, I don't like the case, I don't want the case. Um, I don't know if this fan even lights up, nor do I really care. Just take it for parts, really. Nothing else to do. I mean, it's in pretty sad shape, so... Eh, you know? just don't have any need, don't have any use, and don't have any room. It's just junk. Take the power supply, the fans, processor fan. I'll keep the processor, keep the RAM, put the cards in a pile to have them. That's it. I mean, there's not much else to do. But something did dawn on me. Here's the RAM I had from the old system that used to be here. This one, again, takes RAM bus, if I release these in order. And um, there's mismatched chips. The reason there's mismatched chips is because when LaPrimo and I originally fixed this thing, one of these Corsair RAM chips went bad, and I believe it's that one right there. Um... I don't know if it was the system with the blown caps that it had that was actually the problem. It very well may have been. So I want to try these Corsair chips in that system before I take it apart. I took out the RAM that was in there. These were Value RAM Kingston 256 meg DDR2100s. So that is DDR, whatever it is. I just put the one in. I believe this is the known good. Let's see. Ooh. I don't think it likes it. It may not even agree with this RAM. All right, let me try something else. Here's that 128 meg chip. Let's see if it likes that one. Something tells me it's not going to like any of this RAM. Oh, that came up. Okay. Yeah, definitely 128. Here's the alleged bad chip. Oh. 
Oh, and that came up. So I either mix the chips up or that chip is actually bad. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, that's it. I'm not going to do any more with this except take it apart and there's not much to really see with that. I doubt I'll make a video of it. If I do, you'll see it. If I don't, then you won't. I guess uh, I peeped out on the screws here. Never even mounted that that way. And yeah. Oh well. Anyway, just had to see what it was because I didn't even know. That's it. Oh, what kind of power supply? It's a Win 350 PS. 350 watt piece of crap. Pentium 4 Ready, Intel Corporation. Ooh. And interestingly, this does not even have any badges on the front. Whatever. <laughs> the rear fan appears to work. That can be wired in for any number of other things. But the case fan doesn't. This could be oiled and made to work again. Oh, it's having a convulsion. Yeah. Well, this one can be fixed. Certainly. Definitely need some oil. It'll be good. So we'll keep that around after I fix that up. That's it. I might make a video on just fixing that. We'll seem to get some hits, so maybe I'll do that. Not tonight. I've had enough. Alrighty. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like. Make sure you hit subscribe. And take care. We'll blow you next time. Bye-bye.